Hey everyone, John Reed here, author of 50 Things to See with a Small Telescope, and in this video I'm going to be recommending a few telescopes that might make great gifts for the holiday season of 2016, and going over a few tips of what you want to look for in general when choosing a telescope that you're going to be giving as a gift. So when you're giving a telescope as a gift, you really want to keep a couple things in mind. You want to choose a telescope where you're going to see cool things, and that means having a, uh, a sizable aperture for your budget, and you're going to want to pick a telescope that's easy to use. So there's a couple types of telescopes that are out there that are not easy to use. Uh, one example are uh, telescopes that come on uh, camera mounts. So you'll see a lot of telescopes that are below $100, and most of those actually don't come on telescope mounts at all. They're mounted on camera mounts, and it makes it very difficult to actually um, point the telescope very accurately. Uh, so if you're looking at Saturn, it'll be very difficult, even if you can see it with the naked eye, for you to actually focus the telescope on it. The other type of, of mount is sort of the other extreme. The equatorial mount, and you'll see this written uh, on the telescope description as, as EQ, uh, and, and then you'll see it's one of those telescopes that has a lot of dials and, and knots and stuff on it. Uh, that telescope might, it has, those types have quite a bit of a learning curve, so you might want to stay away from those types as well if you're getting the telescope as a gift. If you're getting it for yourself and you, you're willing to put in the time to learn how to use it, um, use an equatorially mounted telescope, then that's fine. Uh, but, it, but as a gift, it's e easier to get a simpler uh, design. So I'm just going to talk about these uh, two designs here because most of the telescopes I recommend will fall into one of these two categories. So the first is the Dotsonian mount. And this telescope uh, basically sits on a Lazy Susan on the ground, or a smaller one will sit on a table. And you basically just, to aim the telescope, it goes, you know, you can aim it left and right, or up and down, and use a finder scope or what's called a Telrad um, or red dot finder to, to just point it at what you want to make bigger, essentially. And then, similarly, we have the Alt-As mount. And like the Dobsonian, this telescope mount allows the telescope to go left and right and up and down um, very easily. And some of them come with slow motion controls as well. So here we go. Here are the top four telescopes that I believe meet the criteria for the perfect gift telescope. So telescopes that enable, enable you to really see cool stuff. Um, but are also easy, not frustrating at all, and, and just all around great scopes that will provide a lifetime of um, great stargazing. So the first scope I want to talk about is this uh, Mead Lightbridge Mini 130. So 130 millimeters, that's the diameter of the scope, which is about 5 inches. This is really a, a powerful telescope, especially in a tabletop design. Um, it's on a Lazy Susan, so you basically just spin it around. It's got a red dot finder here to um, point at you know what you want to see and uh, just a really easy telescope with a lot of light gathering power which will enable you to see um, deep sky objects you'll see galaxies and stuff like that uh, and then it's a uh, reflecting telescope so it works with uh, by gathering light with a big mirror here at the back and that gives you really crisp views of the planets and the moon um, with no uh, distortion as long as you have clear skies and your telescope is in focus. So the next telescope I think is really neat. Uh, actually is a, is a fantastic deal if you like refracting telescopes. So that's telescopes that use uh, lenses instead of mirrors. Uh, is this one um, that you can get on bnhphoto.com. And so the brand is Bresser, which I believe is made in Germany, and it's the same company as Mead, which is, uh, or at least they were, which is a really, really popular telescope uh, manufacturer. Uh, so anyway, this scope comes with a great package. It comes in a, with a backpack, binoculars, a really, you know, small um, footprint on the scope. So, you know, it's not going to take a lot of space in your house. But it still meets all my criteria for the perfect sort of gifting telescope. So uh, super easy to use. It's on an alt-as mount, so none of the complexity of the equatorial mount to deal with. Um, so it is a refracting telescope. And a little, little bit about those, um, you tend to have something called chromatic aberration. So if you're looking at bright items, they can be difficult to get into focus. So Saturn, for example, it won't be as crisp as with some of the other telescopes, but with the advantage of these telescopes is you get really high contrast views of deep sky objects. So let me just skip over to um, you know, a, a book I'm, I'm working on right now. Uh, so this is 50 things to see with a mid-sized telescope. Uh, hopefully it'll be published sometime in the next few months. But we can look at two objects here. The Eagle Nebula, for example, will look about like this through that telescope, or the Butterfly Cluster, otherwise known as M6, will look like this through that telescope. So really great views. Um, uh, definitely won't look like Hubble. This is a Hubble photo right here. Um, but 
you know, nonetheless, a uh, great uh, contrast for, for Deep Sky. And that's just really an all-around great, great package uh, there. You can do with some binocular astronomy as well. Okay, so next we have um, the Celestron uh, 130 millimeter Newtonian telescope. So very similar to uh, the Mead. A, a few differences here. One, it's not a tabletop scope. Uh, you've got a full-size tripod. The other big advantage of this scope is you've got slow motion controls. So as, as most people know that have looked through a telescope, um, as the Earth turns, the what you see through your telescope creeps across your field of view. Uh, and you need to adjust for that. So that's why you have the more complicated telescopes with the equatorial mount, because that means you just spin one of these knobs and you can you can you know fix the uh, and adjust for the motion of the Earth as stuff sort of flies across your field of view. So with these telescopes, you still need to do that, but you need to do it in two directions. Uh, really not a big deal, uh, and and having these controls allows you to do that much more easily. So if we go back to the um, the Mead here, you do, you do that manually. So effectively you hold on to the telescope right here, and you just push it uh, across the sky to adjust for the rotation of the Earth. All right, now the Dobsonian. If you want to impress someone, oh my gosh, use a Dobsonian. Uh, so with these telescopes, uh, you basically get the most aperture, the most light gathering power for your money. So uh, this telescope has six inches of aperture or light gathering ability. Um, I actually bought this telescope in an eight inch model used for $200. So sometimes on Amazon, you'll see a used option here. If, if you know, let's say your budget's $300, definitely go and see how big a telescope you can get that still fits in your budget. Now, the downside of this is it, <laughs> some of the telescopes may not fit in your car. You know, I use um, uh, my mother-in-law's BMW uh, when I'm in California, and it barely uh, it barely fits in the car. So uh, that can be an issue. Uh, she has the small one, so, you know, sometimes you got to put the seats down and <laughs> put it in. But anyway, uh, yeah, so really big scope, but again, amazing views. Uh, so, for example, what, what would Saturn look like through this telescope? So I'm going to just open my book 50 Things to see with a small telescope. And you can see there's a Saturn image from Hubble. Or, sorry, that's the Cassini spacecraft. So, like, a spacecraft that's actually at Saturn. But with the telescope, it's going to look a bit like this. Actually, uh, with that telescope, even closer. Um, so, you know, maybe you could get it this big. And just really crystal clear, you'll see the gaps in the rings and, and all that stuff. Um, so, really cool uh, telescope there. And yeah, so I've organized the telescopes in order of price, um, but all of these are really great. It just depends on uh, on really what you want. Um, you know, the size of the telescope you're willing to get. You know, we start with a tabletop, you know, quite small. Also a backpack, uh, a scope that fits in a backpack, you know, pretty small. And then we start getting bigger. With this one, you'll have a big tripod to deal with. And then this telescope is quite huge. So anyway, uh, so that's, that's it. I hope... Uh, you know, whoever whoever you're gifting this to uh, has uh, a lifetime of enjoyment out of the telescope, seeing cool things uh, without a lot of frustration. All right, thanks. So I want to talk for just a second about why it helps to have an astronomy guidebook um, to help you find stuff. So here's astronomy software, and you can see it's really got a plethora of stuff that you can see or might not be able to see if you look for it because some of it might be too dim. Um, so what I've done with my two books, 50 Things to See with a Small Telescope and 50 Things to See with a Mid-Size Telescope, is really just take, well, what are the top things that you'll definitely be able to see and how do you find them really easily? So if we go over to 50 Things to See with a Small Telescope and take M13, for example, so, you, so this assumes that you can find uh, the Hercules uh, constellation and then basically it really only, sh I only show the one item here, M13. So I show how to find it right here and then what it looks like through a telescope. Uh, and then here's an example from 50 Things to See with a Mid-Size Telescope, which hopefully should be out by Christmas 2016 or soon after. Um, just take uh, this example, the 37 cluster. Uh, this is what it looks like through a telescope, and here's how to find it. Um, basically, you start with Orion's belt, hop up to Betelgeuse, hop up into Orion's arm, uh, and there it is. And then the same thing with the ET cluster, which I think is really cool, uh, often called the Dragonfly. Uh, you find uh, you can do it, find the Big Dipper, find the North Star, find uh, Cassiopeia, which I call the Big W, um, and just, you know, trace along the two bottom stars in the Big W to find the ET cluster. Um, so using a guidebook like this uh, is especially helpful um, because 
this, uh, the astronomy software really doesn't help you with star hopping, uh, and it can be uh, very overwhelming. Um, whereas if you just have a concise uh, version uh, of the sky in book form, uh, it makes it really easy to hop around, and then you actually get to see what the uh, object looks like through your telescope, um, which I've been able to simulate. Uh, yeah, anyway, thanks a lot, and uh, hope you uh, enjoy your new telescope. Thanks.